all or any portion of the meeting, I would appreciate it now. Great, seeing none. Uh, the next thing I'd just like to say, a uh, couple of procedural things, two or three procedural things. Um, one, this is an audio only meeting. Um, I know sometimes um, folks join by video. Uh, the Board of Selectmen has been holding their meetings audio only. Um, the host has the control to mute or unmute you. So um, when the public comment period comes during this um, meeting, if you'd like to speak, if you could use the raised hand function uh, on, the, um, on the side of the Zoom screen, I will recognize you and uh, uh, the host for the meeting, who's the it's Assistant Town Administrator, Michelle Montsegur, will unmute you. You know, it, uh, if you've done this before, sometimes it takes a couple minutes, so please, you know, bear with us as we try to recognize you, but we will. Um, uh, the, this agenda really has just one item on it that will be considered in public, and that is the proclamation for the LBGTQ plus um, Pride Month um, proclamation that we will consider as a board, and then we will move into um, executive session. So if you've joined us before, you know that uh, the format for the Board of Selectmen meeting typically includes a period of time in the meeting where the board itself will, continue, will consider the item on the agenda, we'll ask some questions, um, make some comments, and then we will open it up uh, to the public for comments and, and questions as well. So bear with us as we, uh, as we proceed. Um, so I guess uh, maybe I'll, Kind of introduce the topic and then Joe and Mary I'll turn to you for questions or uh, comments. So uh, you know as many of you know on the line we were approached to fly the pride flag um, at Town Hall um, as part of the Hingham Pride project which has been a very successful effort I think to um, promote awareness and support for uh, the LGBTQ plus uh, population particularly LGBTQ plus uh, youth in Hingham. And you know we get we get lots of requests for lots of things, and so this request, like anything else, was okay. Well, how how do we go about it? What what are the steps to take, and what might be the risks involved in undertaking um, you know this particular request? Um, and you know I think um, I think that you know, in some ways you think to yourself, well, it should be a no, a no brainer. You know, this is a protected class of individuals under uh, Massachusetts law. And we have this unbelievable uh, group in Hingham who is, has taken ownership and has really, I think, spread the word widely about the importance of recognizing LBGTQ plus um, citizens. And the issue is, um, you know, as, as, we, as we evaluated it, the issue is that speech by the state, and in this case, the town is the state, government speech um, is different than my speech or your speech. And so while I have a flag and display a flag, um, I'm not the state. And when the state speaks, there are, among other things, constitutional, uh, I guess, constitutional ramifications to when the state decides to speak on things. And you know, it's been a long, long time since I've sat in a constitutional law classroom and I don't pretend to be um, an expert. I did pay attention a little bit. And one of the important um, constitutional protections that arises in the context of state speech is the Equal Protection Clause. And that essentially says, hey, uh, state, if you recognize certain speech or you speak in a certain way and I want to speak on the other side of that issue, uh, or on a different issue, you can't distinguish then against how you're gonna speak um, with respect to similarly situated citizens um, in a way that's arbitrary, right? So you have to treat basically, you gotta treat everybody the same. So I think the concern is um, that with absent a policy or a long established practice, which we don't have, of um, flying other than the constitutionally mandated and statutorily mandated flags, the flag of the Commonwealth and the flag of the United States, um, absent a practice of uh, or a policy relating to um, other visual displays, um, the, town, the town has risk associated with 
flying this particular flag at this particular time. Um, and so I think, I think in order to move forward and make sure that everybody understands where their town stands with respect to this issue, um, Joe and Mary and I, through uh, Tom Mayo, our town administrator, and Michelle Monsegur, I think crafted a, crafted a proclamation of very strong and unambiguous language um, that wholly supports um, the recognition of, the support for, uh, and the, um, I think the, the, uh, the importance of making a statement in respect of um, LGBTQ plus citizens. So that's where we are today. Um, and I guess I would turn it over to Joe if you would like to make any remarks at this point. Um, I, I would, but I would just ask the chair whether or not we want to have council uh, weigh in in terms of um, the risks that you just spoke about and how we should best manage those risks while at the same time expressing our support for LGP TQ um, events and um, really commemorating Pride Month. Um, but I know that our actions are guided in this event specifically by town council and it would help me uh, to hear from town council on the, on the topic. Uh, certainly, Joe, is there a, a question in there or you just want John to kind of outline? Well, I, think, I think the question is, um, we are we have considered whether or not it would be um, appropriate to have the pride flag flown at town hall um, and i think you um, summarized uh, your understanding uh, of what the risks are but i'd like to hear from town council um, what those risks are so that we can make a judgment as to the best way to move forward I'm certainly happy to do that. And I guess I, um, I you know, to, to the extent it's still on the table to, to, just to have a visual display of the flag at town hall, I'm, I'm certainly happy to, to, to have that conversation. Is that what you're indicating, Joe? Um, no, I mean, I think, I mean, I'm satisfied. I'm mean, having had my own discussion that we need to move forward with the proclamation. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's an important, um, situation that we acknowledge uh, and that we demonstrate our support of gay, straight, bisexual, transgender. Um, the, the, the specific introduction that you gave to this discussion was that um, there was the request about the flag and I just want to make sure that that issue has now been um, fully addressed by council. Sure, uh, John, would you mind responding to Joe's question? Sure, sure, happy to do it. So putting aside the type of flag for a moment, just as a general rule, um, the town's current policy is that those flagpoles in front of town hall um, are used for official flags and military flags. Um, so to be clear, the town is under no legal obligation to expand the use of those flagpoles to any outside private group. Um, that would be a decision the town would have to make. Um, if the town chooses to keep it as is and keep the official flags as the only flags, um, then the town is on solid legal ground and there's no obligation that it open it up to any outside groups. If we decide to go down that road and open it up to outside groups, um, then I would recommend that we have some written policy as to how we're going to process those requests and make a determination as to which flags would be approved and which flags would be denied. Um, and in those cases, uh, the town would have to be prepared to defend any legal challenge uh, to any group that uh, requests to put a flag up but is denied that request. And the most recent example of that is that City of Boston case that I had sent around um, to each of the members of the board where the City of Boston uh, allowed certain flags to go up but then denied um, a particular flag. In this case, it was a religious flag. Um, and they were sued in U.S. District Court in Boston. and had spent about three years defending that suit, and that suit is currently on appeal in the First Circuit Court of Appeal. So uh, we don't know what the final outcome of that case will be, but it's an example of um, once you open those flagpoles, um, there is a risk of litigation, and there's a risk of having to incur the expense of defending it. And in Boston's case, um, they're all the way up to the First Circuit Court of Appeals, and who knows where they'll be after that. It could be the U.S. Supreme Court. And that case hasn't been finally decided. So 
uh, without the benefit of a final decision in that case, um, you, you know, at this point, we're really um, not sure what the final rule is going to be, at least in the First Circuit. So um, I think that is the risk. I think as, as it presently stands, we're not at risk of litigation. If we open it up, then there's a potential for litigation and the cost of defending it. Thanks, John. Thank you. Any, any further questions or comments, Joe? Yes. Um, so I, mean, I think LGBTQ Pride Month is an important time uh, to talk about struggles uh, to achieve equality and justice in all aspects of our lives. And I think it's important that we move forward with a proclamation uh, to recognize Pride Month. No other questions or comments. Great. Thanks, Joe. Um, Mary, questions or comments? Um, you know, thank you. I. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody who's um, joining this call and people who have uh, reached out to the board in different ways to um, to lend their voice to uh, to this conversation. Um, uh, Karen, you haven't had a chance to read the proclamation yet, and um, I, I might ask that um, that we do that shortly because I think that um, for me and I think for you and Joe that there are a lot of important concepts and words in the proclamation that, that we think are significant. And, you know, I, I think, you know, so far we've been talking a little bit about what the, what the board is, is not prepared to do. But in that, I don't want to lose sight of what the board is prepared to do because we don't make proclamations all that often. Um, in my years on the board, I think I can only remember two. And, and that's because um, we save them for significant events. And I think we all believe that, that this is a significant event. And, you know, consistent with proclamations that, that we've made before, um, you know, I, I think we're each making a, a personal commitment that in carrying out our obligations to the town, uh, that we are gonna live up to the principles that are contained in that proclamation. Um, I think that, you know, you and, and Joe and John Coughlin have spoken about the, the potential legal implications, and, and I would just add two things. You know, the, the, the first one for me with respect to legal consideration, uh, you know, that's, that's not just a cost issue, it's a time issue. Um, regardless of whether or not litigation has merit, um, it the, the town has, an, has a responsibility and a requirement to respond. Um, we have to gather information for depositions. We have to respond to record requests. Sometimes people are involved. And it's been my experience while serving on the board that um, in, in, our, you know, in our office of four people in the selectmen's office, I would say we at least spend one full-time person all the time dealing with litigation and associated matters. And, you know, if, if we're gathering documents for litigation, we're not working on other important things. And um, so, so to me, there's both a financial cost and a cost in terms of carrying out responsibilities that, that people want us to do. Um, I'd say one other thing, which is that, you know, I think uh, in my experience, when there are matters of, of public interest, and certainly this is one of them, um, it's been my experience that without kind of a policy and some sort of a public process behind it, um, the, the decision gets challenged. And what I would really hate to see is uh, that, you know, we have people pushing back on a decision the board makes that's viewed as lack of support for the initiative, in this case, the Pride Initiative. And, and I really just don't wanna see that, that happen for a lot of different reasons. So I, I would close by maybe you know, asking if when you think it's the appropriate time, you could please share the, the proclamation that we've thoughtfully put together um, for, you know, for, for people who are participating in this call and um, uh, you know, I, 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 I support the words, I support the spirit behind it, and I, I, I commit to upholding it. 
Thanks, Mary. Um, sure, I can I can read the proclamation and then um, and then we can open it up for questions and comments uh, from the public. I will say a couple things about that procedurally, and and that is that. Uh, and it's, you know, I know this is a little artificial because we're, you know, on a phone line, but, you know, if, if we're at town hall and, and because this is a board of selectmen meeting, the questions should come to me as the chair and then I'll direct them to, you know, to the, the appropriate person to respond to your, your question. And, you know, I also think that, as we all know, um, it's an important hallmark of our, our civic life here in Hingham to be collegial and respectful. Um, and I would anticipate that that's how we're all gonna conduct ourselves this afternoon. So uh, let me read the proclamation and then I will open it up for comments and questions. Uh, so Hingham Board of Selectmen, lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer, or questioning plus Pride Month proclamation. Whereas Hingham is a community that values diversity and inclusion and is committed to equal rights and opportunities for all its residents. And whereas Hingham recognizes the important contributions of its LGBTQ plus residents to the town's history, culture, economy, and civic life. And whereas June 28, 2020 marks the 51st anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, an event that gave rise to the beginning of the gay rights movement in the United States. And whereas June is now designated across the country and in the Commonwealth as Pride Month. And whereas we celebrate the accomplishments of the LGBTQ plus community towards securing important rights and freedoms, often through struggle and adverse, adversity. And whereas we remain vigilant against continued oppression and discrimination against the LGBTQ plus community and against any new political efforts to overturn these accomplishments. And whereas we affirm our support for our LGBTQ plus residents, including our students and our employees, vendors and visitors and stand with them to protect their civil rights and ability to live openly without fear. And whereas we congratulate the members of the Hingham Pride Project for their efforts to increase LGBTQ plus visibility and to support LGBTQ plus citizens, particularly our LGBTQ plus youth through the distribution of over 700 pride flags that are flying across Hingham. And whereas we acknowledge the important efforts of the Hingham School Committee, the school department leadership, teachers and staff to support our LGBTQ plus students and to help all students meet core educational competencies that prioritize social emotional learning, health and safety and respect for others. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Hingham, do hereby complain, proclaim June 2020 as LBGTQ plus Pride Month, voted this fourth day of June 2020, Karen A. Johnson, Mary M. Power, Joseph M. Fisher. So that is the statement. And as Mary indicated, we, we all uh, carefully, I think, reflected on, on how important our words are, particularly in the days we live in today. And, you know, I think this is a very important statement of where the town stands uh, with respect to LGBTQ plus uh, rights. So um, I will now open it up to the public for comment or questions. And I see uh, Alyssa Porter, your hands raised. Michelle, can you unmute Alyssa? Okay, can you hear me now? I can, Alyssa, thank you. So I just wanted to make a clarification just so we know moving forward. Um, there was the statement that regardless of the legal costs, the time involved for employees at town hall dealing with legal issues is extraordinarily um, excessive when there's some legal paperwork to pull out, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's kind of like a time <laughs> stop. Sorry, someone's clearly at my door. Um, my question is, if we had a cadre of pro bono lawyers ready to fight any legal action against the town in support of the pride flag being up, um, because of the time that is taken away from employees of town, would this not be supported in an article that we tried to get through to a town meeting for a vote? Yeah, so I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't know exactly what form an article at town meeting would take. Um, but what well, to, get on, to get on a warrant to get 
for this to ever be put up for vote by the town because you said it would be more impactful if there was a policy and the whole town voted on it as opposed to being a um, board of selectmen decision just that it would be better legally to have something where the whole town voted and that there was a policy behind it i'm just trying to clarify that if we had um some free representation legal representation willing to take this on by a variety of lawyers would that ever be a beneficial thing or is it still not an impactful assistance by having lawyers instead of having to pay town council if you had free lawyers to help with any legal battles surrounding the flag yeah no and i guess um i, I i've heard this town meeting thing a couple times i'm not exactly sure where it's coming from i mean i think I think kind of the, the care and custody and control of town property is actually um, statutorily fixed with the Board of Selectmen and our lawyer is on the phone so he can respond to that if I'm on thin ice here. So Karen, I can barely hear you. Okay, I, I think this is a policy that, uh, that the Board of Selectmen would enact and we would do so, you know, we would do so after careful research and it would be part of a um, a public process, uh, you know, that that the board could could choose to undertake. As John Coughlin said earlier, you know, the current practice anyway is to fly only the flags that you you've seen on those polls, which are the constitutional flags as well as uh, flags related to our veterans and uh, uh, police. Um, so I, I I don't I don't know that that this is a town meeting consideration. I think it, it falls within the, the uh, you know, the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen. Um, I do think you're right, though, that in considering, it, if the board were to move forward and consider to craft a policy, you know, one, one set of resources uh, might be uh, the numbers of nonprofit groups that deal with this issue, you know, on a regular basis. So I, I, I think you're right, and I think the, the town has a long-standing practice of of enlisting the help of volunteers whether it's you know volunteer legal counsel that um, would sign the town on as an actual client or you know working with um, with members of the community that have particular expertise to help um, to help the town develop a policy uh, but that you know I think that that's a next step and I, I think you're absolutely right there are resources out there that the town could gather to continue to consider um, you know, how best to show support for uh, not only LGBTQ plus um, citizens, but, you know, in general, it would have to be a policy that applies to the flagpoles as a whole. Um, Christina, uh, Christina O'Connor. Hi there. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, I just had um, a couple of related questions. And one, I was wondering, um, what are the flags that fly at Town Hall? I know you mentioned official flags and military flags, and I was just wondering if that means United States and the Commonwealth flag, plus um, like POW MIA flag, um, or if there are other flags. And if so, um, what was the process that we followed to get those other flags to fly. I guess I just wanted to clarify, like what's there now and how those um, came to be. Uh, yeah, good, good question. Um, and I see Keith Germans on on the line, so I may turn to Keith in a minute here to to delineate the flags that have flown on those flagpoles. But uh, my understanding is that it is the the flag of the United States of America, the flag of the Commonwealth, the PIA, PI, POW MIA flag. And then there was a flag that flew in memory of the veterans of World War One, I, I think, Keith, um, as well as the um, memorial, uh, the Peace Officers Memorial Day flag, uh, which is a flag that uh, memorializes uh, police uh, and public safety officials who have been killed or disabled in the line of duty. Um, and I think that there was another. Uh, veterans related flag. So I think the process there has been um, that those functions are related to services that we provide at town hall um, and sort of within the ambit of government um, and not 
and, and, and so I, I, I guess to respond directly to your question, there's been no, there's been no third party flag, no flag outside of the kind of hang on municipal government um, service group that has flown on those poles to my knowledge. Okay, and Karen. can I follow up? Yeah, I'm sorry, who's, who's uh, speaking? Karen, Karen, Steve. Chief Chairman, let me just clarify your position before you, before she sends in another question, because I, I just wanna make sure that, every, can you hear me? Yes, I can, thank you. I just want to make sure that so constitutionally uh, municipal building must have the flag of the United States. And now after several, it was about a few months ago, several months ago, the president enacted an executive order that said while flying that flag, you will fly the POW. It used to be for only holidays, certain holidays. So you will fly that now. So that flagpole would be US and, bl and the black POW MIA. On the pole to the left, as you're looking out the boardroom window, the governor proclaims that you shall fly the flag of the Commonwealth at every main administration building within the town. So you're required to have the flag of the Commonwealth posted. And traditionally or historically, we've always flown the town of Hingham flag under that, but again, with no real policy until last year, which our policy stated that if a municipal employee whether he was a whether he or she was a retiree and or a killed in the line of duty, which we've had a few of those as well, um, meaning they were actively on the rolls and active employee died from an injury or illness or a disease. We would then lower that flag, the red Hingham flag to half staff. So that's the only known existing um, policy on those. Um, the World War One, you are correct when it was a national uh, a referendum to celebrate the centennial of World War I. A national committee was formed in Washington, state committees were formed, and then they reached out to each municipality asking if they'd like to be part of the national role where Hingham was added to one of the communities on the national role representing if we flew that flag for two years. So from November 11th, 2017 until November 11th, 2019, I petitioned the board of selectmen. And I'm sure I, you can remember I came before you all um, probably not Joe, but um, I think he was on um, zoning then, but um, to ask if we could be part of that. Um, traditionally, before I write a memo, before Police Week, National Peace Officers Memorial Week, I write a memo to ask for you to allow me to fly that flag for the week of Police Week, which is a national observance. And the other final national observance is Memorial Day. We memorialize those uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines by flying. Now this year, we used to fly a we we used to fly a flag that was considered what they call the Blue Star Banner, and it says we um, support our military or something like that. We have since moved to a new flag. There's a new initiative out there now. It's a Gold Star flag um, to remember all of those families who've lost loved ones in the line of duty from the revolution to today. So those are the, that's kind of how we've been operating. I just want to make sure everybody was aware of, of what was being flown and why. Thanks Keith, that was great. Great summary. Uh, sorry, can I ask the last follow-up related to that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you and, and thank you, Keith. Um, so my last question is around, um, you mentioned that if a, that the, a gr groups have a, you know, that this is a group approaching you to ask you to fly the flag. Um, and I was just wondering if there is a difference between a group approaching the Board of Selectmen to ask them to fly the flag and the Board of Selectmen um, doing so on of their own accord without being asked to by a group. And that is in this situation or in any situation, I guess. I just, I'm just asking generally. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure I've got a response to that last question. I don't know if John, uh, you know, I, I think that, um, yeah, I, I don't have a response to that last question. If John Coughlin wants to step in. Um. Yeah, my understanding was this, this particular instance was a, was a request from an outside group. And that's, you know, that was the information that I was provided. And that's the way um, that I looked at it, you know, whether the town would be in a position of going out and purchasing its own flags and on occasion and, and, 
trying to fly those on its own, I'd, I'd have to look into that. But I, that wasn't the way the issue was presented for, for this instance. Right. I guess I'm not fully understanding your question. So, you know, I think, I think the flags that Keith described uh, came through requests from, from, you know, from departments and service and related to services that we, we provide as a municipality. So okay. So, yeah. So I guess can I finish, Christina, if you yeah. don't mind? Um, sure. and, so, and so those are the only requests that have, that in my mind have ever been made and only one has been made while I've been on the Board of Selectmen. Sorry, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. I thought you were at the end of a sentence. Zoom is, is challenging that way. Um, so I guess just to clarify what the question is, is could the, ta could the Board of Selectmen choose without a request from an outside group to fly a particular flag? Um, yes. Um, yes. I mean, I, okay. think, I think we have the, the custody and control of the buildings um, and attributes of those buildings in the town of Hingham. And okay. Again, I'd look to my legal counsel to tell me otherwise, but yes. I just want to jump in here. You know, um, uh, I, I appreciate the question. Um, I think on matters like this, which we've, you know, we know one thing for sure, and this is a matter with great public interest. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it would be appropriate or responsible of a board of selectmen to make a unilateral decision like that um, without, you know, without some sort of a public process behind it. Um, and in fact, uh, if, if the board wanted to go that route, it would have to do it in a public meeting where there's opportunity for public comment, et cetera. Um, I, again, uh, think that uh, in this town, and I know to some it feels, it feels difficult and sometimes bureaucratic, um, people like to participate in decisions. And uh, I think particularly ones of significant public interest such as this. Yeah, and I guess, Mary, I was just, I was responding kind of generically, but I, I completely agree with you. I think if, if um, in particular, uh, you know, again, and I, I think we do draw the line in terms of what, what's central to the town government and then um, groups outside town government making a request. I think there is a, a delineation there. Um, and with respect to that, I think um, we would need a policy in place. Um, coming back to what Joe Fisher and, and John talked about at the at the top of the meeting, which is, you know, to make sure that we all understand what the expectations are for the flagpoles, um, and that the public has been informed and part of that process, and then we would consider requests in keeping with that, in keeping with that policy. Any anything further, Christina? No, thank you very much. Okay, um, Alyssa, I saw your hand again. Are you? Do you? Have, do you want to be recognized? Or are you all set? Um, can you hear me? Yep. I just wanted to just get an understanding. So the it was the peace officer flag that was uh, requested by an outside group, but that is somehow um, central to town government. Uh, that was the flag that went up. The peace officer flag, uh, the request was made, I believe, through Keith German, um, and it's, it's part of a memorial um, program that we, we, we recognize annually with the police department, so it relates directly to our, our police department. So it's not a, it was not an outside group. Oh, I'm sorry, was it the blue star and the gold star, the gold star banner and the gold star flag that he was referencing that was put up that needed to be requested? Well, I, I, he, I mean, he came, he came before us and asked, yeah, and um, again, I, it came through veterans, our veterans service office. So that falls under the governmental flag category? We're just trying to get it like a clear, a clear understanding. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, anything? further. Um, Mr. Buckley. Uh, thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes. 
Okay, I just wanted to update you on my petition. I remember last time during the selective meeting a couple of days ago, I mentioned that I made a petition for this, which had at that time, I think 3,600 signatures. I wanted to let you know that now uh, the petition ha is nearing uh, 5,600 5, signatures, uh, if that influences your decision at all. I mean, you know, I, 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 I applaud you and, um, you know, this is, and, and I'm frankly, I'm just so, I'm gratified that people are stepping up and signing up and showing support um, for LGBTQ plus citizens. Um, you know, this, I, I don't have to tell you, this is not, this isn't an easy town, right? Um, and I, I experienced this issue when I first, when I ran for the Board of Selectmen in 2017, when I had a number of my gay friends indicate that they didn't think they could campaign for me because, because you know, they weren't wanted in Hingham. And, you know, that cut me to the core because I love this town and I don't think that's true. And I think what you're telling me with this petition is that is not true. Um, and, and so the, the work of the Pride Project is an important signal to our neighbors and our friends um, and our coworkers, that this is this this is where the values of the town stand, and I think the proclamation that I read also is undeniably direct in terms of where the values of government stand with respect to this issue. I, I think what I was trying to say at the beginning of the meeting was there is a there's a complexity that attaches itself to government speech, which the flying of the flag is government speech. That, that, that creates levels of risk that the municipality has got to evaluate uh, and that, you know, as strongly as I feel about this issue, I think that to be, I think that to do this in the absence of a policy um, would be irresponsible. So I, I, I in no way say that to diminish the numbers of people um, that are standing up for this issue. Um, but I think at this date, we don't have the tools that we need to do this in the most responsible way for the town. Okay. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here again. Um, who do we have? Um, I think Galaxy Note 10, if you could uh, state your name and address for the record, um, I'd like to recognize you next. Yeah, hi, it's Katie McBride at 157 Central Street. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, uh, my question is, again, a clarification question. So if a government body asked you to fly a flag, then that would be acceptable. So I'm thinking the Cultural Council, which this would fall under the purview of, or Diversity Council, or whatever the name of it is, but I think it's Cultural Council. And that's a government body. So if they asked you to fly this flag, would that fall under a government asking you to fly a flag situation? You know, Katie, I, I just, I, I, I don't know. I mean, and I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so that, so that's like a possibility. I mean, the police asked you to fly a flag, so you did, right? So if we can get a government body to ask you to fly a flag, then that seems to be okay? Well, I think there's two components to what we've done in the past. One is that it's a government body act, acting, and two, it's a flag that directly relates to a service that the town provides. So and the Cultural Council does provide services for people to increase diversity and to be accepting, right? So that would fall under their purview. I, I think that, I, I just think that, um, as I said to Mr. Buckley, I think in the absence of a more comprehensive policy than we have in place right now, um, we, are, we, we are not in a position to fly the pride flag. So, I mean, you know, I suppose we could posit a number of hypotheticals where we think it might work. I think that, um, I think I've probably said all I can say on that point. I don't know whether John or Joe or Mary want to clarify that, but. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, I'll, Karen, I'll jump in. Sorry, I was having a little muting trouble. Um, you know, my, in, in my discussions with council and my discussions with the town administrator, who I know is also, you know, um, made some inquiries on our behalf, um, to the extent that we are flying governmental flags, um, that, 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 that is the circumstance that we have in Hingham. And what council is telling us is that those governmental and military flags, um, you know, by, by limiting it to that, we, um, as he said, are, are out of risk, are, are not at risk. Um, from my perspective, uh, if, if a, a, you know, a committee in town or somebody in town asked us to fly a non-military or non-government flag, um, I think it's problematic um, for, for the reasons that you've mentioned. Um, you know, I think that, you know, further there's, you know, there's a lot of positing and questions and these are some thoughtful questions. But again, what it just says to me is we are nowhere near ready to be able to make a decision of this magnitude because um, we, haven't, we haven't done the due diligence necessary to make an informed decision. And, you know, first and foremost, you, Joe and I, our responsibility is to protect the town. And we have to make sure that decisions we make do that and that we understand all of the intended or unintended consequences. And, you know, I, I just don't think we're there on this one right now. Sandy, anything further? Um, nope, that's it. Okay, thanks. Uh, Libby, if you could state your name and address for the record. Michelle, do you see Libby? I do. I've selected unmute. She's got to click it as well. Okay. Zoom technical difficulties. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, could you state your name and uh, address yeah. for Libby? 370 Gardner Street, Hingham, uh, Libby Lewicki. Um, so how do we go about getting a more comprehensive policy so that at the very least, we could be ready to fly it next year. Uh, that's a great, I think a great question, a great suggestion. And I would say that um, it would be something that the Board of Selectmen could take up, you know, in, in the coming months, uh, as you suggest, to be prepared uh, to address the issue, I think, more comprehensively for the town. So I think, I, you know, I, I off, I'll be honest, right? I've got a couple. I've got a couple weeks left, so it would be the new board of selectmen after, after the election on June twenty seventh that would take up this issue potentially. And 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 so if we could continue to um, help make that happen as as citizens. Y yes, absolutely. Um, as a family with a mortgage and a kid, we've been thinking about life insurance for a few months. Years. Years. Um, yeah, I think it's a really, really good suggestion, Libby. And I think, okay. you know, and I think it's a complex issue. So I, I do think it is the kind of issue that, you know, we would want to start on soon. And, um, you know, we would want the help of legal counsel uh, because that, that, that's one of the big hurdles, I think, to, um, you know, to considering this. So, yes. Karen, if okay. I just Thank you. add, you know, um, the, the Board of Selectmen typically um, in the June and July timeframe sets goals. And, um, you know, no, understanding that, um, you know, ju just as part of that process, it, it seems to me that that's a really good opportunity to look at the totality of things that, um, that the Board seeks to accomplish and make some decisions. Um, I, I don't, I don't think it would be, um, so I, I would, you know, uh, I, I would follow that process because, um, I think sometimes when we make sort of individual commitments, we, um, you know, uh, the, the totality of everything is maybe more than, more than we can manage. Um, but, you know, I would say that when the Board of Selectmen takes up its goals, typically in the June and July timeframe, those are publicly posted meetings. That process typically takes place over a couple of meetings. Um, and we try to do a significant amount of outreach to understand from citizens uh, where they want us to be focusing our time. And we appreciate any and all public input. 
That, thanks. You're, you know, you're absolutely right. And, um, you know, I know that in the past when we've set our goals, um, a number of those goals have been informed by, by people reaching out to the Board of Selectmen and uh, I think articulating areas of, you know, town government, go governance or policy where, um, where they see a need. And I, I would say one of them, um, one of them this past year was, um, was around uh, climate change. And, you know, we, we eventually pulled together a, a task force that Tom Mayo is working with now um, to work on, you know, goals for car carbon neutrality. And frankly, that would not have happened absent, um, absent people pushing for it. You know, it's, um, as Mary suggests, like, uh, like all of us, right? I think there's the balance of the the day-to-day -day mechanics of running a hundred million dollar plus enterprise, and and the overarching policy goals that we ought to have and we ought to aspire to. And you know, I think I think a, a good year you make some progress on on both of those fronts. So, you know, I think to Libby's point, um, part of seeing this through, I think would be would be articulating those, the importance of this as a goal um, for the limited resources of the Board of Selectmen going forward. Um, okay, further, um, further questions or comments from the public? I'm not seeing anybody. So I, I, I guess too, I'd, I'd like to come back to Mary's point in the beginning, which was, you know, I, I think that I think that this proclamation, we all took a lot of time reflecting on what we wanted to say and how we wanted to say it. And again, I, I think that it um, it's part of the it's part of our practice when something important comes up to be able to recognize that this is how we do it. Um, mm -hmm. and I think we're we are keeping with our practice um, in that regard. Uh, so I would ask for any questions or comments with respect to the with respect to the proclamation that I read earlier. Not seeing any hands. Um, Joe or Mary, any final comments, Joe? Um, yes, I think we've talked about um, the flag issue, um, and I think it's something that does need to be addressed. Uh, for me. Uh, an unanswered question is how the First Amendment impacts what we can do and how we do it. I do not want to open the Pandora's box that if we fly one flag, we then have to fly a neo-Nazi flag or some other flag. Uh, I just want to make sure that we follow a procedure that we can recognize um, the path that we follow as one where we can fly a flag um, where the town can endorse it uh, without having the negative consequences of having to fly other flags. Um, so that to me is the real concern. Um, and I hope that we can address it in the coming year. Uh, with respect to the proclamation, I fully support it. And when it's time, I am prepared to make a motion to accept it. Thanks, Joe. Um, and that, that's, a, that's a really good point. Um, uh, Mary, any further? comments or questions? I'd be ready to offer a motion if you'd be willing to accept it. I think we have one more, um, one more unmute and that's um, for Michelle Ayer, but Michelle, I'm not seeing your name. Um, maybe, um, do we know Michelle's, um, let's see. Uh, I think I'm here. Okay, there you go. Can you hear me? Yeah, Sorry, thank you. thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Sorry, I couldn't raise my hand. Um, I just wanted to say very quickly, um, just on behalf of the school committee, I just wanted to say um, thank you for including your support of the work that the Hingham Public Schools and the faculty do to support the LGBTQ plus students um, in our district. I appreciate that you, the Board of Selectmen, took the time to include that support um, because there's a lot of really good work that's being done at our school schools by our faculty and I appreciate the fact that you um, acknowledge that for them so thank you thank you Michelle I appreciate your comments um, 
Okay, if there's no uh, further discussion, I would accept a motion for the lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer, or questioning plus LBGTQ plus Pride Month proclamation as follows. Whereas Hingham is a community that values diversity and inclusion and is committed to equal rights and opportunities for all its residents. And whereas Hingham recognizes the important contributions of its LGBTQ plus residents to the town's history, culture, economy, and civic life, and whereas June 28, 2020 marks the 51st anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, an event that gave rise to the beginning of the gay rights movement in the United States. And whereas June is now designated across the country and in the Commonwealth as Pride Month. And whereas we celebrate the accomplishments of the LGBTQ plus community towards securing important rights and freedoms, often through struggle and adversity. And whereas we remain vigilant against continued oppression and discrimination against the LGBTQ plus community, and against any new political efforts to overturn these accomplishments. And whereas we affirm our support for our LGBTQ plus residents, including our students and our employees, vendors and visitors, and stand with them to protect their civil rights and ability to live openly without fear. And whereas we congratulate the members of the Hingham Pride Project for their efforts to increase LGBTQ plus visibility and to support LGBTQ plus citizens, particularly our LGBTQ plus youth, through the distribution of over 700 pride flags that are flying across Hingham. And whereas we acknowledge the important efforts of the Hingham School Committee, the school department leadership, teachers and staff to support our LGBTQ plus students and to help all students meet core educational competencies that prioritize social emotional learning, health and safety and respect for others. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Hingham do hereby proclaim June 2020 as LGBTQ plus Pride Month voted this fourth day of June, 2020, by Karen A. Johnson, Mary M. Power, Joseph M. Fisher. Oh. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Joe? Aye. Mary? Aye. Karen? Aye. Okay, well, I, I, I think it's an important uh, step, and um, I must say I do appreciate um, all of the conversation today. Um, and uh, I think very thoughtful comments that we will certainly um, take into consideration. Uh, Alyssa Porter, you have another question? I just wanted to say thank you and to say that it's over a thousand now. Oh, fantastic. Well, yeah. my la sorry, my last statistic was 700. So we can, uh, we can correct that in the, uh, in the final proclamation. Wonderful, thank you. Fantastic. Hey, Karen, this is Tom. I just wanted to um, ask, I assume you'd like us to post that on our website? Uh, yeah, with, uh, with Alyssa's correction, yeah. Absolutely, will do. Tom, okay. I'd, like to, um, I'd like to make sure that you also please, um, uh, you know, send it out in one of the Hingham News Alerts to people who sign up for the town emails. And could you please also forward it to the Hingham Journal and the Hingham Anchor? Um, I'd like I'd like to um, get it out to the press and get their assistance in getting it out to the public. Will do. Thank you, Mary. Okay. And now um, we have some regular business that we need to um, attend to this afternoon in an executive session. Um, and so I will state that the board will enter into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to potential litigation because discussion of this matter in open session may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the town. The board will not reconvene in open session. All those in favor of moving to executive session say aye. Joe? Aye. Mary? Aye. Karen? Aye. 